All right. Well, again, thank you for joining the session on DigiPen Institute of Technology. My name is Michelle Cooper, and I am the Director of Outreach for Recruitment here at DigiPen. Um, my email and our general uh, phone line is on the screen, and it'll be um, at the very end as well. Um, I will wrap up with about five minutes just in case there are any questions. So, um, so this is the DigiPen campus. Um, you can see some of our students in our campus. Um, DigiPen is one large building with an additional um, workspace that we have for students in another building right behind that. And our building used to be a Microsoft building. Um, so what is DigiPen? So if you've never heard of DigiPen, we're a private four-year college that was founded in 1988 in Vancouver, BC. We've been in Redmond since 1998. Um, DigiPen was the first college to ever offer a video game development program, and that is now expanded to include eight degrees or eight undergraduate degrees and two graduate programs. Um, we focus on the areas of computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, as well as music and sound design. <clears throat> so where is DigiPen? We are in Redmond, Washington. Um, so just on the east side of Seattle. Um, so a little bit of the um, area that DigiPen is in, um, being in Redmond, it kind of is the game hub, um, game development hub of the country. Um, there are multiple game studios that are really close to campus that our career services does a great job of developing relationships with. Um, it's very common for companies to be on our campus visiting, um, doing a presentation for our students and women at Turn 10 Studios was recently on campus um, to meet with our students. Um, so a little bit of DigiPen by the numbers. Um, like I mentioned, we were the first school to ever offer a video game development program, um, which is our Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Real-Time Interactive Simulation degree. Um, our uh, students um, can experience about 19 students per class on average. Um, obviously, some of those classes will be bigger, especially in their first year. Um, some specialized classes will definitely be smaller than that. Um, our alums mostly go into the game industry um, technology industry. And at this point, our graduates have been credited on over 2,000 commercial game titles. Um, and uh, they are ranked as number one, DigiPen is ranked as number one at the highest median salary among Washington State Colleges um, for the salary that our students have after graduation. Um, DigiPen Games have won a number of awards. You can see a lot of different numbers at the bottom of the screen. Um, they have won over thir uh, 313 awards for game projects, 514 awards for um, our films and animations. Um, and DigiPen has been ranked as one of the top five game design schools in the country by Princeton Review um, for the last 14 years. Um, so I mentioned the areas of expertise that DigiPen has. And so that's how we break down our um, eight degree programs, eight undergraduate programs and two master's programs um, into these four areas. Um, so I'm gonna focus on our graduate or undergraduate programs um, a little bit more tonight. Um, so under computer science, we have the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, which is a um, pretty straightforward Bachelor of Science in Computer Science degree, which is a great option for students who are looking to study computer science, um, but want to learn the way the DigiPen teaches. Um, all of our computer science students um, will learn C, C++, C Sharp. They take a lot of similar courses in their first year, um, so and then they start taking their more specialized classes um, in their second year. Um, our um, first specialized degree is the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Machine Learning, um, where our students learn how to program predictive algorithms. Um, so they're learning how to program the things that we all kind of interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when Netflix suggests new shows, when there's ads that pop up in our social media based on our Google searches, um, when um, we see a self-driving car, a Tesla self-driving car on the freeway. Um, under game design and development, um, we have the Bachelor of Arts in game design. Um, and this is a program um, for students who are looking to pay attention to a game's rules, the story, the levels. Um, these students will take a lot of psychology classes, humanities classes, um, about a majority of their classes are around game design. And um, they will take some computer science classes. Um, and then there's a number of specializations that they can pick from um, that they will focus on in their last two years. So in the first two years, they focus on taking classes in all of those areas. Um, so that could be narrative design, level design, um, user research research, things like that, um, and then to get to focus on those, um, on a certain ones uh, later on. 
um, the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Game Design. Um, so we usually get a lot of questions and there's a great video on the website that compares and contrasts the two that help students decide um, between those two. Um, but this is mostly a computer science degree. Students will take about 90% computer science classes and about 10% of those game design related courses. Um, I mentioned um, our first, we were the first uh, college to offer a game development program, and this is the Bachelor of Science Computer Science in Real-Time Interactive Simulation. These students are learning how to program games to happen when they should happen. Um, so when you hit a command on your controller, you would expect your character to do something um, immediately. So a particular jump, Mario, you would want to see Mario do something. Um, these students are programming, learning how to program those games to happen when you want them to happen and how you want them to happen. DigiPen offers two sound-related programs. Um, the Bachelor of Arts in Music and Sound Design is a great program for students who are musicians. Um, they will have a, uh, a tutor in their instrument of choice, um, or if they're a vocalist throughout their time here at DigiPen, um, they'll take music theory and composition, but they will also be learning sound design. So learning how to recreate sounds that maybe they can't record in nature. Um, they're learning how to do that in studio. Um, the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in Digital Audio. Um, these students are learning how to program a sound engine. So it's pretty similar to the real-time interactive simulation, um, but it's going to be more sound uh, and sound related. So making sure sounds are correct in a game. So if there's hail or a car goes into a tunnel, you would expect certain noises and sounds, and these students are programming those, those to happen. Um, and then finally, our digital art and animation program. Um, it's a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Art and Animation. Um, students will take some traditional art classes, a figure drawing class, especially in their first year. Um, and then starting in their junior year, there are a lot of electives available. So students can kind of hone in on the certain classes um, that they want to take um, based on what's offered. Um, but it allows them to kind of make sure that they're focusing on a certain area that they're really interested in and looking for in their career. Um, so a little bit of DigiPen's academic approach. Um, DigiPen um, students will take classes just like you would expect in a more traditional college. Um, they'll be learning all the theory and knowledge that they need in lecture classes. Um, and they will have individual assignments and tests and all those different things. There might be some group projects, um, but really the core of DigiPen's curriculum is putting all of that classroom knowledge into practice. So starting their sophomore year, students have the opportunity to be on a project team. Um, they uh, have a lot of say as to who is on their team, who they work with, um, and they will usually work on usually a game or an animation. Those teams can vary between about three to 20 students um, most of our students will graduate with two to four professional quality projects. Um, and so we, and you'll see lots of examples on our website. Um, under the student showcase, you can see a lot of those examples. We have um, many, many student games uh, published on Steam as an opportunity for the public to play our student made games. Um, and they get to really put everything into practice so that they're ready um, to enter the workforce. Um, and those teams are made up of students from different degree programs. Um, so they're also learning how to work with folks um, who are coming at the project with different skill sets. So applying at DigiPen, um, DigiPen does work on rolling admissions and students apply specifically to one degree program. Um, so our office is here to help um, as students are making that decision. And um, there's lots of ways to connect with us that I'll cover towards the end of the presentation. Um, but all of our applicants do submit certain um, items, and then each degree program does have a little bit of different admissions requirements. Um, so all of our applicants are required to submit an application. DigiPen has its own application um, that's available on the website, and that's currently open. Um, high school transcripts are required, or if a student has taken um, community college classes or something else, maybe running start, we would need those transcripts. We can take unofficial transcripts this year um, for evaluation. We would eventually need the official transcripts, but for evaluation, that is fine to submit. And then a personal statement is required of all applicants. Um, and then there are a couple of items that are optional for our applicants to submit. Um, the first one of which is in a second essay. So they um, can submit a second essay to describe anything else they want to to our evaluators that they feel like wasn't covered in the rest of their application. So that can cover a variety of topics. Maybe it's a grade um, grades that were a little bit lower one semester and they want to explain what happened, what they learned. Maybe there's something there's, they're really proud of that they want the evaluators to know. Um, so a lot of different students will use that for a lot of different reasons. 
letters of recommendation are also optional. Um, we do ask that those come from um, a teacher or an employer rather than a family member, um, someone who can speak to their work ethic. Um, and then we also are test optional. So if a student wants to submit their test scores, they're more than welcome to, but they're not required to. Um, and our applications are reviewed holistically. So everything that's submitted will be considered. So if scores are submitted, that will be part of their essay. Uh, if students do want to submit an optional item um, and have it there before it gets sent to evaluation. They just need to let our application team know so they can hold on to their application um, before sending it to evaluation. And once everything's submitted from the student, it can go to evaluation. Um, so different ways that students can think about preparing for our degree programs and things that they need to submit. Um, so starting with the Bachelor of Science uh, programs, we encourage um, math and science classes. Um, if they can take a computer science class now, that's awesome. It just helps them prepare, helps them um, practice something that they think they might study later on. Um, and so we really encourage that, but we don't require that they've taken a computer science class. We do require for four out of the five Bachelor of Science computer science programs that students have taken at least pre-calculus. Um, the game design program doesn't require it, but we do recommend it. Um, so if students have not taken pre-calculus, we encourage them to get that on their schedule um, and make sure that they've taken it if they're applying to one of those four BSCS degrees. Um, for the Bachelor of Art in Game Design, um, if students can take psychology classes, um, if they can make a game for their friends and get some feedback, um, those things are going to help. For the application, students submit a design portfolio. Um, that includes, there's a prompt regarding a park bench um, that they respond to, and then they also submit two additional essays um, describing two things that they've designed. So the portfolio as a whole are three essays, um, one responding to that park bench prompt, and then talking about two things they've designed. And that can be a lot of different things. Um, they could talk about a cookie recipe they designed or a board game that they designed. What the values want to see is their design process and so how they thought through that project. The Bachelor of Fine Arts program, we encourage students to draw as much as they can. If they can't take an art class, that's awesome. That's just going to help them. Um, they do need to submit an art portfolio that um, does uh, require 10 to 15 pieces. Um, students can contact our office if they would like um, an art feedback session. We can get that scheduled with one of our art faculty as they're working on it. So not when they're completely done and ready to submit, um, but as they're in process, that's something we can do so they can get feedback as they're working on their portfolio. Um, and then finally, the music and sound design. Um, students submit a music portfolio. Um, basically, it's just two uh, different videos of them playing their instrument of choice, um, different styles of music. Um, we encourage them to be playing an instrument, um, understand harmony and pitch, um, being able to read music. All those things are going to help them in this program. And for all of these, um, there are more details on our website of what is required for all of the different pieces um, that I just described. Um, our, um, I mentioned we're working on rolling admissions. Um, and so uh, the application for each year usually opens in September um, for the following fall. Um, and so for fall 2024, um, we just um, had our priority application deadline, um, but our general deadline isn't until April 1st and our final deadline is July 1st. So that's when we will close the application is July. Um, we encourage students to get their application in as soon as possible um, because some of our resources that we offer um, are first come, first serve. So for scholarships, those are first come, first serve. And the better um, chances are when students are applying earlier with uh, throughout the admission cycle. Um, if students apply by the April 1st deadline, that does help them with housing, the housing application. Um, students can only apply for housing if they have um, been admitted and um, gone through the process of being enrolled. Um, so made the decision to come to DigiPen and sign their student enrollment agreement. Um, and then, like I said, we will close the application on July 1st um, for the fall semester. DigiPen does offer a spring start. Um, you can see our deadlines for this past um, spring um, that starts in early January. Students that start in spring um, will usually also take a summer semester and then that catches them up with the students that started in the fall and only three deg degree programs do offer um, a spring start so it's not available for all of our undergraduate programs. Um, so a little bit of uh, student tuition information. Um, these are the costs currently for the 2024-2025 uh, school year. Um, so this will be uh, coming up for the fall 24 semester. Um, 
these, uh, the tuition will be 39,100 for the academic year. Um, so both fall and spring semester. On average, um, a full-time DigiPen student is taking about 17 to 20 credits per semester. Um, and so that's what this covers. The tuition covers 16 to 22 credits. Um, if they're taking less than that, they pay, pay per credit. Um, and uh, and so it is a pretty rigorous curriculum, but just to keep that in mind, um, that it's a, it's a busy, um, we keep our students busy for sure. Um, and then below you see some estimates of other costs that uh, our students would have. Um, so housing, living expenses, food, um, books, different school supplies, transportation and personal expenses. Um, these are estimates. Um, it's not completely, um, it, every student is gonna be different. So it depends if they li are living with a lot of roommates, if they're living in DigiPen housing, if they're living at home. Um, so these costs will differ, but this just kind of gives you a good idea of what you can expect. Um, DigiPen does offer housing. Um, our housing is apartments that are all within about two miles of our campus. Um, there's a shuttle that goes back and forth um, between the campus and the apartments. Um, and we do have professional staff, student staff that live on site. Um, so they assist um, students, uh, residents. They host different programs and events for them to form community. Um, our apartments are furnished, so couches and coffee tables and things like that. Um, students do need to supply their own bedding and um, dishware and things like that, TV, um, and they can work with their roommates to decide who's bringing what. Um, but all the utilities and things are included in the price um, of the apartment that students would be living in. Um, you can see the housing um, email is there. It's just housing at digipen.edu if you'd like to contact them with any specific questions. So a little bit of student life at DigiPen, they're not just students. Um, and uh, students uh, have the opportunity to join a variety of student organizations. Um, so different clubs, um, those ch can change from year to year. There's usually a couple or a lot that actually are um, carry over from year to year. Um, one of those is PRISM, um, which is a great um, LGBT group on campus um, for students to find community. Um, there is a, a Cage of the Week club. They watch a Nicolas Cage movie every week. Um, but students can also start their own club if there isn't one that they're interested in joining. Um, there's a variety of events that happened every year. Um, that includes a Halloween pageant, land parties. Um, there's always a welcome week to start the school year off. Our student ambassadors work in my office um, and they're assisting us with different events that we host for prospective students. Um, company days are available for students. Um, I mentioned companies come and visit our campus, present to them. Those are called company days. Um, the DigiPen Student Union is our student government. Um, so lots of options for students to be involved on campus, um, hold leadership roles, um, so different ways to find community. Um, different ways to connect with us here at DigiPen. Um, students can chat with us um, and uh, current students. Um, we have a admissions discord students can join, um, ask professional staff um, questions. Um, we can get them in contact um, with who they may need to get in contact with. That's a great way to get a hold of us. And um, we can accept text messages if that's easier for students to get a hold of us. Um, admissions meetings are on Zoom. So they're one on one with an admissions staff member to review any questions that a student has. Um, and um, online information sessions happen about once a month, if not more. Um, we have one about once a week this month called the Deep Dive Series. Each week we focus on a different area of study so students can learn um, more about that program directly from one of our faculty members um, and from current students in that program. And those are Wednesdays um, at three o'clock. And, um, and if students attend um, either the admissions meeting or the online information session, we'll waive their application fee. Um, all these in-person events, we will also waive their application fee if they attend. Um, our pre preview days are Saturday events. They, again, happen about once a month. The next one is in March. Um, and that's an opportunity to come to campus on a Saturday. You get to hear from our president, um, admissions, financial aid, um, housing re representatives are available to ask questions. Current students are available. Um, there is a session each time on, again, each area of study. So you can go and spend an hour with the faculty um, to learn more about that program. Um, we have daily campus tours. We have two options, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, so an opportunity to visit the DigiPen campus and spend about an hour um, with one of our staff members getting a tour of our campus. And then finally, our student shadow program. This is an opportunity for our students uh, prospective students to come and spend time with one of our current students, attend a class, 
um, in the area of um, study that they're interested in and get, just kind of get a sense of what it's like to be a DigiPen student and um, get a feel if that's exactly what they want to do. Um, we need a couple of weeks to get that planned and ready for your student, but we um, that it's a great option. For any of the events that I discussed, you can register on our website under the Visit Us button or contact our office and we can help you um, get registered. Um, so this is more contact information for our office. Um, our direct line is 425-629-5001. You can text our office at 425-414-3633 and we answer those Monday through Friday at 9 to 5. Um, and then our email is outreach at digipen.edu. Um, the DigiPen website is also listed, um, www.digipen.edu. Um, this is my direct contact information. Again, our general information listed again. And then at the bottom is a survey um, for the college fair as a whole tonight. Um, so you can write down or click, or you can write down the link or uh, use the QR code. Um, but I'll go ahead and keep that screen up for just another minute or so if you want to write that down. Um, and then I can take some questions if you want to write that in the chat. Um, and I can go ahead and answer those um, so that everyone can hear them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take those. And feel free just to write those in the chat. Any questions I can help with, the admissions process, housing, financial aid, um, the, one of the degree programs? Yeah, so the question is, what programs are offered to high schoolers to see what DigiPen is like? That's a great um, question. Um, so all those events that I mentioned, those are ways to learn about our programs. Um, there are a couple of other resources. Um, the DigiPen Academy offers um, programs specific, more specifically for 11th and 12th graders. They have a pre-college program. Um, so that's a great way to learn a little bit um, about um, the DigiPen curriculum. Um, so let me bring, I can get you that link just one second. Um, and then Open World um, offers K through 12 programs. Um, and so they, in the summer, um, and those are again on the DigiPen campus. Um, and I'll put their website in the chat as well. Um, Academy also works with WANIC. Um, so there's a couple of options with the DigiPen Academy. And so you can reach out to them with any specific questions. Um, it is a different staff, but those are great options, um, both of those to get um, a better sense of DigiPen and see um, if that's what you are interested in studying. And open world summer uh, workshops, the registration is currently open for summer of 2024. Um, and those are broken down um, by, uh, you would take a class specifically for your age. Um, and so those are taught by faculty um, from DigiPen um, and then some industry leaders as well. So there's a ton of great information uh, there. Any other questions? So uh, another question is for music and audio degrees, is an audition required um, on your main instrument for admission? That's a great question. Um, again, so DigiPen for the Bachelor of Art in Music and Sound Design, you would submit video of your playing your instrument of choice. And so that kind of serves as your uh, audition. Um, and so you can read more about that through that in the chat for you as well. And there are a couple specific um, requirements that you just want to take a look at for those. Um, and so that does include, so it's the performance portfolio. Um, it's two unedited video recordings of live performances and contrasting styles with your primary instrument. Um, um, a written document indicating which musical piece you are performing for each. Um, and then optional is um, examples of musical involvement. 
Um, the question is, are there um, summer programs for high schoolers? Yeah, so that's just what I mentioned before in the um, links that I have um, above in the chat. So DigiPen Academy um, offers a pre-college program mostly for 11th and 12th graders. And then Open World has summer workshops um, for students from kindergarten up until 12th grade. And then what is the minimum GPA? Yeah, we don't have a minimum GPA uh, requirement. We do recommend at least a 2.5 um, for that require, uh, for the degree program. So I'll put a link in the chat um, to our admissions page, as well as our academics page to get a better sense of all the degree programs. Um, for all of our degree programs, um, there is a sample course sequence and a required course list. Um, if you would like to get a better sense of the classes that you would take in each degree program. Um, the next question is, is there anything freshmen can do to prepare to apply, like any portfolio specific? So it really depends on the degree program that you apply to, or thinking about applying to. Um, so for computer science, um, if you can take math and science, um, take a computer science class. Uh, if you're looking at an art program, draw as much as you can, um, take, um, an art class uh, for game design, psychology might help, history classes, um, working on games. And if you're looking at the music program, um, playing an instrument, being part of the band at school, uh, different things like that. So it really just depends on the program that you're looking at. Any other questions? We have just a couple of minutes left. Are there any internships? Great question. Um, so DigiPen will host an internship fair, um, our career services hosts. And so that's an opportunity for sophomores and above to um, go and meet with companies that are looking for internships. Um, that is, There is an option to do an internship for credit if you were interested in that. Um, and um, DigiPen will assign students to an internship, but will help make them aware um, if there are internships um, that they know are open. That's a great uh, way to start to put all your skills into practice um, outside of the project teams, um, but starting to make those connections in the workforce. Uh, what kind of core education classes will students take in addition to their specific degree classes? Yeah, so um, DigiPen, because you're applying to one degree program, um, you do get to start your degree program classes on day one. Um, some of those core education classes will be spread out more throughout the four years than concentrated in the first two, like you might see at a more traditional school. Um, so I'll throw this link in again. Um, in those course requirements um, for each degree program, you'll get a better sense of what those core classes are for each program. Um, some of those will differ depending on the degree program the student is in. Um, but it does include English and math and things like that. Students can add a minor if they are interested. Um, there are a variety of minors, um, art, electrical and computer engineering, English, mathematics, music, physics, and psychology. Yeah. Um, how long does it typically take to get a decision after applying? So after students submit an application, it usually takes us about two to four weeks to get them a response as long as everything has been submitted. Um, so after our application team has determined everything is in, it goes to evaluation. At that point, it does uh, usually about two to four weeks, sometimes a little bit longer if you submit right at the April 1st or July 1st deadline. Um, but that is on average two to four weeks. Awesome. Well, we are just, I think, about at time. Um, so thank you all so much for being here to learn more about DigiPen. Again, my name is Michelle Cooper, and I am happy to help with any questions. I'll put my um, email in the, or our general um, office email in the chat if you would like to reach out with any questions. And um, our staff is always happy to help. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good evening. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us.